Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of my Minecraft Hardcore Season 2 world. I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. In this episode, I'm going to go ahead and build myself an iron farm, but in the last one, we built this wonderful Enderman Skulkificator, and it does a marvellous job at transforming Enderman straight into Skulk Blocks. I mean, I can get Shriekers, Sensors, and even the Skulk Veins too. And one of the reasons I wanted to build this farm is that I wanted to use Skulk Sensors to build the farm itself. I want to use the calibrated Skulk Sensors to send a signal up and down the farm to turn it off and on whenever I like. And not only that, I do actually want the, uh, the Skulk Blocks as well, for no reason in particular. I might go into more detail of that a little bit later on, or maybe in a future video. But for now, this farm is absolutely amazing. Just look at all of the skulk I already have. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> and we've gotten tons of ender pearls from this as well, actually. Oh, I actually want 16 of those. Those are my inventory ender pearls. I can't be losing those. So in total, we've already got all of these skulk blocks. Which is amazing, really. As well as 44 Skulk Sensors and 7 Shriekers. That's pretty cool. I'm going to take these sensors, actually. We're going to make use of them today. Also, you might have noticed a little something in my inventory. I now have a Netherite Axe and a Netherite Shovel. And yeah, I did do a little bit of Netherite mining between episodes. I used the TNT that I gathered from the desert temples that we raided for mending books, which did an okay job at getting me the ancient debris. The issue is, is that I ran out and I only had six ancient debris. I needed eight, so I had to go on and keep mining, unfortunately, which felt like it took an age. But eventually I got it and I converted my axe and my shovel into netherite. Since they both have mending, these are endgame tools right here. So they truly deserve being turned into netherite. Anyway, first things first, I need to find the location of my spawn chunks in my overworld. Because the spawn chunks are the best place to build an iron farm since it's always loaded. The iron farm will just produce iron endlessly forever. And one easy way to do this is to actually just throw an item through the end portal and try and find it back at spawn. And that's going to be the center of our spawn chunks. That torch will do. So let's go ahead and try and find it. And it looks like it's nighttime too, so I'm glad I threw a torch in. Because that's going to serve as a light source given that I've got dynamic lighting. So it should be easier to spot. Oh! I found an alley! <laughs> Hello, friend. <laughs> yeah, I think I lost you, didn't I? Well, you can uh, you can come with me to the iron farm, I guess. We'll have fun over here. Now then, where is the center of my spawn chunks? It should be somewhere around here. Aha! I found it, and the creeper is trying to say hello. Is that something beneath me? That's a horse, isn't it? Let's just jump down here. That is the center of our spawn chunks, which is awesome. And you can actually see the chunks by pressing F3 and G. And that tells you where the chunks are in your world. So we've got this grid here. And that torch is in that chunk there. And unfortunately, spawn chunks have actually changed a little bit recently. They're no longer as big as they used to be, or at least they won't be in a future update. I'm not sure when that timeline is. I feel like I read them in the snapshot changed logs ages ago. But spawn trunks are going to be smaller in the future. They won't be as big as they used to be. They'll actually only be a 3x3 three three chunk radius around the center of the spawn chunks. Which, I'll be honest, isn't too big. So I've got to be really careful about where I build my iron farm in this video. That's alright though, because I've got some stone blocks on me, so I'm just going to go right ahead and build a little bit of a square which should be dictating where my spawn chunks actually are. So this chunk here is our center. So I'm just going to build around the outside of that. So after a little bit of block placing, I have marked out the area of the future spawn chunk loading radius. So everything within that outer stone circle should theoretically remain loaded. Well, this chunk here will serve as our center. So I've got to make this these four blocks here, the center of my iron farm. Does that make sense? Oh, I've got a portal there too. I've got to be careful of that. I don't want iron golems going through that because there's no space on the other side. <laughs> oh dear. That log though, 
I think that might actually be the first block that I ever mined in this world. So let's just go ahead and break that. We're going to save that. There we go. Wait, which one was it? Was it this one? I think it was this one, right? Oh, I'm going to have to look back at the footage. For goodness sake. Right, okay. First block broken. Huzzah! First block broken. Number two. I'll have to look back at the footage because I, I was doing things and I instantly forgot which block was which. Somehow, my, my mind's just emptied that knowledge from my head. So, we're going to save both of these for now, and I'll and I'll go through the footage and get the correct one later on. I'm fairly certain it was the one on the left. I'm just not sure about it. Anyway, in order to actually build our iron farm, we actually need stuff. Why is there a pillager on my stone platform? Where are your friends? Dude. What? You seriously spawned up there? You know, while I have you, I'm actually going to... <laughs> I'm going to save you, my friend, because I actually have a, a need for you. Do I have a boat? I do have a boat. Okay. Mate. <laughs> I can't believe this just happened. I was going to go and have to go out and get myself a, um, a pillager. And now, there we go. And I can even sit in the boat, and he'll break his crossbow. That's amazing. I put no work into this guy. <laughs> Seriously, though, where are your friends? Did they die? Oh. He may well have shot them over the edge. Well, luckily for me, I had the replay mod recording, so I could do some investigating into what happened. And as it turns out, the pillager group just happened to spawn in the perfect spot beneath my stone outline, and one of them happened to spawn on top of it. The others then promptly wandered off and despawned, which left us with this lone fellow here. But anyway, enough of that random pillager being right where I need him to be. I need resources. I need the stuff that I need to build the farm with. So let's just go ahead and grab those real quick. So I'm going to need plenty of blocks for this, and I think a shulker of stone is probably going to do. For the farm itself, we're not going to worry about making it look pretty just yet today. That can wait for a future episode. We're working purely on the farm today. We're also going to need some amethyst crystals so that we can make the calibrated skulk sensors. So let's just go ahead and break some of these. That should be enough. Yeah, 49 should be much more than enough. I think I'll leave those crystals there for now. I should probably fill this room up with water at some stage, shouldn't I? Oh, I see that small crystal. I'll take that too. Oh, that's what the recipe is. I thought it needed the actual clusters. <laughs> well, I guess we'll just have to harvest up all of these crystals then, won't we? Well, that should do the trick. 22 calibrated skulk sensors. That should be enough. We're also going to need some blocks of amethyst for our calibrated skulk sensors to work. I'll also be taking all of these lecterns back. I'm going to use them to dictate what kind of frequency the calibrated skulk sensors are looking for. And given that I actually need a very specific frequency from our lecterns, I'm just going to go ahead and create a bunch of empty pages in this book. Sign it. Uh, we'll call it the Iron Forge. Now, can I actually duplicate this book? How how does that work? No? Oh dear. Do I need to kill chickens? Is that what I need to do? Can I duplicate it by doing this? Oh, I need to kill chickens. Okay then, chickens, where are you? I know you're around here somewhere. Come on. Here, chick, 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 chicken. Here, chick, 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 chicken. Where are you? Aha! Target acquired. Boom! Awesome. Feathers for days. You too! I see you there. That grass saved you. The grass literally saved your life. I, I don't know if you meant to hide behind it, but well done, sir. I will let you live. Target acquired. I'm going in for the kill. I've missed. 
Unfortunately, you are not so lucky, my friend. Nope. There we go. And that should hopefully be enough to duplicate my book enough times that we don't have to worry about killing more chickens. I do actually have an egg in my inventory, so let's just see if uh, this egg feels like repopulating the world of chickens. It does not. Okay. There goes their chances for survival. Oh, that chicken just saw me smash an egg. I wonder what it's thinking right now. And the reason why I want to use skulk sensors is because they actually count as wireless redstone. So it can power that trap door whenever it receives a signal from a vibration. And that can be movement, it can be a noise, anything that creates a vibration in the game's code, like my player jumping around it. So whenever it receives a vibration, like me running around it, it will activate and flick that trap door up. But if I sneak around, it won't do anything. Because sneaking is a quieter alternative that doesn't produce any vibrations. But unfortunately, skulk sensors cannot actually pass vibrations onto each other. See how I'm running around this skulk sensor? It's not sending a signal over there. But that will get a signal if I get closer to it. But this changes if I use a calibrated skulk sensor. So, it will now relay that signal over to various different places. Calibrated skulk sensors will actually send signals to each other. So me jumping around will actually send a signal from there to there. And we're going to make use of that. So the idea is, is that I can use the calibrated skulk sensors to send a signal wirelessly from the bottom of the farm to the top to deactivate it by pushing pistons down on top of the pillagers that I'm going to have in our little aggro spots, I guess. Or scare spots, I guess, because the pillagers are going to be scaring the villagers that we're going to be putting into place with this farm. And you can make the calibrated skulk sensor look for a very particular and specific signal. So if I put down this lectern and put down my iron forge book and take it over to... What? Why is there no... Oh no! There's only one page! Oh, I've, I've ruined it. I need to kill more chickens. For goodness sake. In which case, chicken, you're slated for slaughter. I've missed you. There we go. Here, chick, 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 chicken. Here, chick, 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 chicken. Where are you? I know you're here somewhere. You can't escape my gaze forever. Target acquired. Oh, we've got lots of them. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, I've missed. There we go. Yeah, 22 feathers. That should hopefully be more than enough. Oh, the alleys followed me again. Um, run away! Don't follow me. Leave me. Please. So let's just go ahead and make some book of quills. That's probably too many. But this time, we'll write a little note at the end of it. The Iron Forge is a surprise! The Iron Forge. But now I should be able to just go right ahead and convert all of these books into copies of the brand new and updated Iron Forge. What a novel. So these Iron Forge copies are just bad now. But well, that's fine, we've got some new ones. So the calibrated skulk sensor can look for a very particular vibration signal. So for example, if I take this all the way up to 10, it will now only look for outputs that produce that 10 signal. Oh, that's what it's supposed to do, right? Okay, everything should be working now. <laughs> I think I've got the calibrated skulk sensor down. I've not really used these things before, but... They should be working as planned now. So in order for the calibrated skulk sensor to work and relay messages from one to another, they need to be on top of an amethyst block. And the signal that it's looking for is currently on page 10 of 15, which if I open my shulker boxes, that's the right signal for that. But it's not the right signal for me jumping around. But it is also the signal required for a note block. So this note block is going to serve 
as my switch. But if I put that note block here, you can see the signal relaying from one calibrated skulk sensor to another. And that's a little mechanic that I am hoping to take advantage of today. I'm hoping I'm not confusing anyone. <laughs> We're also going to need beds for the villagers to sleep in, or they won't be able to produce any iron golems. So I've brought plenty of bamboo and a little bit of wool. I mean, the bamboo can also be used for our storage system that we're going to have. It'll be good to have access to as many chests as possible. I'm also going to bring some glass, and we'll use that to hide away our pillagers so that the villagers can't see them when we turn the farm off. We'll also need some kelp for our water sources, so I'll bring some of that. I'll also bring some sand as well, because we'll probably need that in order to remove our water sources after we've gotten our pillagers and our villagers into place. And you might be thinking, pillagers? You've already got a pillager up there. The reason I'm saying pillagers is because I'm actually going to have three layers to this farm. Yeah, that's right. This is going to be a three-layered iron farm. I'm also going to do my best to not watch a tutorial for this farm. I feel like I've done pretty well at that so far in this world of just not watching tutorials for anything. So I'm going to try and produce this iron farm on my own based on the knowledge I already have for this game. In Hardcore Season 1, I built an iron farm designed by Logical Geek Boy, and that was an amazing iron farm. I just want to have a bit of a crack at it myself, without following his video to the letter. <laughs> there we go. That's one full shulker of sand. That's probably way more than I actually need, but I actually got rid of all of my sand recently. I turned it all into glass. So it's good to have a little bit of backup sand as well. The other thing on my list is blue ice. And I do know where an iceberg biome is. It's just way in this direction over the ocean for a couple thousand blocks or so. There we go. That's the iceberg biome I was looking for. Okay, let's just go and get some of this ice, shall we? We can craft the blue ice. I'm okay with doing that. I get some of the snow too. There we go. That should be more than enough blue ice. Yeah. I don't see us needing more than five stacks. <laughs> okay, so I think that's all of the important stuff that I need. Not sure I need anything else other than my redstone supplies over here. So let's go right ahead and start building our... Why is it always thunderstorm? When I try to speak. So I'm not planning this. It's just happening. <laughs> For the second time that I'm going to try and say this. Let's go ahead and build that iron farm. <laughs> so here we are back at the spawn chunks once again. Let's get to work. So first things first, how high off of the ground do I actually want to start building my iron farm? And I think what we're going to do is we're just going to go all the way up to about Y120. And this is where we start to place in our amethyst blocks. And the first thing we need to do is get our calibrated skulk sensors set up. So we've got our amethyst blocks down, we've got our lectern, we've got a comparator, we've even got a buck. And we're just going to leave that on page 10. So now that skulk sensor refuses to actually acknowledge my existence. And this here is going to be a little spot that we're going to have our pillager in. So if I put a bucket of water here, the pillager should get trapped here if I put a block uh, here. And now, for as long as a pillager is here, it is forced to jump up and down. And hopefully that will bring it in and out of sight of any villagers that happen to be looking at it. I'm not actually jumping right now. My hand is well away from the keyboard. And yet, I am jumping. And our pillagers are going to be doing that too. They're going to love to learn to jump. They'll be jumping for all eternity. And now we've just added our pistons that will push these glass blocks into place so that we can switch the farm off as we need. Uh, can you let me out, please? I, I just want it out. <laughs> there we go. And this here is going to be our little contraption that we use to turn the farm on and off with our little calibrated skulk sensor. And it actually includes a T flip-flop in the design. We should lead the glass blocks down just from one single momentary pulse, and then it can pull them back up again with the same pulse. 
So just to show the proof of concept, there is no redstone linking that skulk sensor up to the top just there. But if I hit this note block, those pistons can fire and push the red glass into place and retract them when I want, whenever I like. And that's pretty good going, don't you think? And I think the way we're going to work this out is we're actually going to have a 10 block gap between each calibrated skulk sensor. So we should end up with our farm reaching all the way up to Y180. So that's going to be a pretty tall farm, I'm going to have to say. It's going to be pretty high off the ground. <laughs> but to be honest, I feel like I want that height because I don't want the iron golems accidentally spawning on the surface below. That would be a mistake. We can't have loose golems running around after all. Oh, no sorry. <laughs> so let's pillar up another 10 blocks before I start again. So building the next two layers is literally going to be the exact same process, just repeated over and over again. So that's every layer of the pillager stations complete. And hopefully, once I put down this note block and hit it, all of those glass blocks will be pushed into place wirelessly. Let's just see if that works. Yeah? Ah, see? It works. There's a little bit of a delay on this one and then that one even further but it does actually work and I'm pretty happy with that so I will be able to hide away the pillagers if I ever feel like I need to and that might well happen given how many layers I've got to this farm but I think it's going to be a good one I actually love this on off switch <laughs> I've not really messed around with skulk sensors before, but just doing that wirelessly? Oh, it's pretty cool, you know? Rain? Again? Guys, I don't think it's even been 10 minutes since it last rained. It just... It's constantly a thing! Just never quite goes away, does it? Must always rain in the overworld. So now I feel like I've got to get our villager modules into place before we go any further. And I think the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to have... A villager modules going up that side and that side and also this side but the far side we're gonna have a, a tube well in the future so this space is going to be empty for now but I need to work out how I actually get everything else into place let's pillar up and build those modules okay so I think we're gonna build this bottom layer out of red glass and then for the middle layer of the farm, we're going to go for orange and the top yellow to reflect the glass that we've already used in the farm itself. I am not happy with that. <laughs> Every time I open the shulker, the whole thing fires. <laughs> okay, I've got to be wary of that. But luckily, the fact that I press it each time means that the whole thing activates. It's not like it's going to get itself out of sync. At least I hope that's not going to happen. <laughs> anyway, villagers need beds in order to produce iron golems. So let's just go ahead and get those put in. And then to stop them from wandering off and falling out of their villager module, but still giving them the ability to see the pillagers that are going to be in place there, we're just going to block them off with some iron chains. And that should be that villager module complete. So the last thing we actually need to do is to get our blue ice in place. Now where's the edge of this chunk? I don't want to get too close to the edge there. I think we've got some space left still. Yeah. That'll be good enough. Let's just get our water in. And this is gonna be our iron golem spawning platform for this particular villager module. So when the pillagers have access to their beds and they sleep and they get scared by the pillager over there, they should be spawning iron golems over here. And we can wash them off over the edge down there. So, one down, eight more modules to go. <laughs> I've got to be super careful of what I do here, by the way. I don't want to accidentally click a bed. I've gone all this time without sleeping. It would be a shame <laughs> to lose that streak right now. Although, a cure to my insomnia would be more than welcome. Okay, Whistler, do not touch the beds. Do not touch the beds. Please don't. I beg of you. 
All right, it looks like we've got one layer down. So we've just got two to go. And with this layer, we're going to use orange glass instead of red, just to give a little bit of variety to the farm itself. No other reason more than that. Oh, no. I'm going to run out of blue ice for this. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back to the iceberg biome to get some more, aren't I? Oh, dear. But that is the orange layer complete. So on to the next one with the yellow. Well, there we go. I've run out of blue ice on the second last villager module. Oh dear, we're going to have to go out and get some more, but we'll do that in a bit. I think I'll just build the rest of these platforms temporarily out of stone. We can change those blocks later. I can at least get everything else in for now. And here comes the rain again. Never stays away, it must storm again. I'm going to need some villager protection from storms, you know, now that I think about it. Should be all right, though. At worst, lightning will only convert the villagers on the top layer here. So even if this layer all turned into witches, we would still get some iron golem spawning on the layers down below there. Okay, last beds, Whistler. Do not click on them. Not now. You've got this. Uh, uh, there we go. I think we've done it. Just don't look at them. We'll be okay. Our insomnia is still intact. Oh, yes. <laughs> Why am I celebrating over that? Oh, and there we have it. We have all of our villager modules in place. We just need to get ourselves a little bit more blue eyes so that we can finish that platform on that platform over there. And then the iron golem spawning platforms will also be done. Well, I guess there's no time like the present, is there? <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and say that that must be more than enough blue ice that I need to finish off my iron farm. <laughs> so now I can just get rid of these stone blocks and replace the spawning platforms with blue ice like they deserve. There we go. All platforms now complete. So a little bit of a progress update, we've actually built some fall tubes for the iron golems to fall down and then at the bottom, at the surface of the world here, we're going to cart them off into the middle there where they're going to die in this little pool of lava and we should end up getting dropped in these chests just here. I have to say though that this part of the farm is actually temporary though. I've got some other plans that I want to bring to fruition, but this is what I need right now to get myself built up for the rest of the world. Just a, a few chests. It's just a few temporary chests. And then at some point in the near future, we'll build the actual proper permanent killing chamber for the iron golems. And it's going to be so cool, I swear. <laughs> so I guess the only thing we've got left to do is to breed up some villagers for the villager modules and also a couple of pillagers so that we can get the villagers scared and spawning iron golems. So we've got this fella just here. And I do know where another pillager outpost is. The bad news is that it's quite far away. But the good news is that I can get all the way back here from the ocean. There's a lot of water access. Uh, what on earth is happening to my character just there? I'm just glitching in and out of existence there. <laughs> but anyway, I can grab my pillagers and I can take them back via boat. Is what I'm saying. We're going to be taking them back on the high seas. Yar! <laughs> also, I've looked at my footage. I know exactly which one of these is the correct first block. And that is the correct first block. So this one. This is no longer a correct first block. As you can see, it's lost the name. So crisis averted. We now have our first block broken and we know it for sure. And the pillager outpost that I'm talking about should be just over here on the other side of the ocean, somewhere in this desert. It's the one that we found when we were raiding desert temples for mending books. So it shouldn't be too hard to find. It was somewhere around here. I know that for sure. Aha! There you are. That's the one I'm looking for. It's even still got the iron golem. Oh, that's amazing. But I'm going to have to be a bit wary of him. 
don't want him around, and I also don't want you around. You can go away, please. No. Now, sir. Will you please get in my in my raft? Please. Please. There we go. Let's go. Oh, the pillagers have just hit each other. <laughs> so, my dude, you're going to be coming along with me. You know, I could actually do with a compass roundabout now. Let's, uh... Let's just go ahead and get one out. I know I've got one somewhere. There it is. That's what I need. We're going to spawn after all. Could do with that little pointer. And the good thing about this little trip that we're taking is that the pillager is currently breaking his crossbow as we speak. Genius, eh? I don't have to wait as long at the other end. <laughs> oh, just look at this coral reef, though. Beautiful. And it's huge too. It just keeps going. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just currently looking up how much durability a crossbow has. I am curious as to how many shots this guy has to do with it before it breaks. Durability 465. That's a lot. Okay. Looks like we're going to be in for the long haul at the other end of this boat ride, I guess. My dude, you can shoot that crossbow as much as you like. You are still never going to hit me. <laughs> oh, look at that. We've got a dolphin. <laughs> I miss the days where the dolphins would get super speedy if they were following boats. That was insane. <laughs> that was so fun to watch. But there it is, the iron farm. We finally made it. This was a long journey, I've got to say. How close can I get? This far. Okay, well, I guess we've got to do that trip again. Let's get ourselves a third pillager. Okay, our goal this time is to get ourselves a pillager captain. So, I've got to keep an eye out for a guy with a flag. I'm not currently seeing one. Captain, where are you? Out. Why do none of these guys have flags? What's that about? Wait. Uh, <gasps> there he is! Okay. You, sir. You shall be my, uh, my captain. And now I'm going to leave these guys and fly away and despawn most of them. Just so I can get that other pillager out. <laughs> Is that good enough? Oh, there's a dude in my boat. And I'm being attacked by phantoms. Okay, you, sir, are not allowed. Let's go, my dude. Oh, no. Right. We are away, sir. Oh, captain, my captain. Okay, let's do some maths here. If a pillager crossbow has 465 durability, and he's shooting once every... Right, start the timer. Oh, hang on, no. Reset the timer. It's got time already on it. Okay. Start the timer. And how long is that... About two and a half seconds or so. So, 465 times 2.5 is equal to 1,162 and a half seconds. And if we divide that by 60, we get about 19.375 minutes. So, it's roughly 20 minutes. I probably wasn't too accurate with timing that crossbow time just then. But... I guess we've got to wait 20 minutes each for these pillagers to break their crossbows. Which is a bit of a long time, I've got to say. So I guess there's going to be a lot of sitting around doing nothing while these guys shoot at me. Or I could do something else. I could go fishing. I could go fishing. Let's go fishing. I mean, who knows? We might get lucky and get a mending book. And we all know that I could do with another one of those for my pick. <laughs> Oh, look at that. We've captured another dolphin. <laughs> I see you there. Swimming along behind me. Oh, what's it gone? Oh, it's just gone down. <laughs> Ooh, emeralds. <laughs> I saw that. We might have to grab that later. Now, we don't want these two accidentally shooting each other, so let's park them in two opposite little dead-end rivers. There we go. 
Now, I do actually believe that while it will be a good idea to break those pillager crossbows, it'll be a good idea to actually have our villagers breeding up at the same time. So, before we go and fish for eternity, let's build a small breeding chamber for them. So I've probably done this a little bit too early, but I've just gone ahead and made our little staircase that will lead our villagers out of, and they should just go straight to sleep in their beds. I'm not 100% sure on that. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Depends on whether they can get past the chains, really. But I think we'll have our villagers breeding up in here, and then when it's night time, we'll break all of these beds. They should, hopefully, just pathfind straight to the new beds. And I'll get right into place. And then this staircase that I've just built now is going to be how we get them into the villager breeder in the first place. All right, do you know where we are? We are actually at the place where we got our tiger villagers from. In here, I believe, is... A savannah villager and also an ordinary plains villager. So, these two guys are actually very close... The spawn, which is just over there. That's the first pyramid that I found in this world. And Cherryville is way over in that distance somewhere. So, I think the best way to get villages to our iron farm is actually just to set these guys free. Come on, my dudes. No, hang on. These guys are going the wrong way. Over here, please. Well, I guess what I'm saying is I'm going to hopefully lure these guys over to the iron farm with these two composters. Let's see how that goes. Oh, they're swimming. They do be swimming. Come on, let me give you a little push. You can make it across the river. Yes. Oh, these two champions. Look at that. Expert swimmers. I've got quite a bit of time left in the day, so hopefully... I'll be able to get these two villagers over to the iron farm before the working hours end. But if they do, I could always use a bed to try and lure them over. But I'd prefer to do it with a composter. Otherwise, we are in danger of accidentally sleeping in this world. And we don't want to do that. We've gone so long without any form of rest. I don't want to lose that streak now. It's, we're too good. <laughs> Even if my insomnia is a complete curse, the show must go on. Over here, my dudes, to the composter. These two villagers are being so forthcoming. They've done everything I want them to so far. I'm just a little bit wary of how much time is left in the day. <laughs> uh, working hours are going to end soon. Come on, keep going. We're so close. Where's the staircase? Oh, we're here. Right. Okay. I need to get these guys onto that tree there. Oh, I've lost it. I've lost working hours, I think. Right. I think we've got to use beds. I don't have a bed. Okay. We're going to have to be quick with this. Let's see if we can make that work. Come on. Come up here. Please. Oh. You see that? That's scary. <laughs> Go to bed, please. Okay, and you shall die. Up again, please. Rise and shine. Oh, they're doing it. Yes. Oh, that was so simple. That's good. That's really, really good. Now, don't click on these beds. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Oh, this is tragic. The zombies have started a horde. <laughs> Oh dear. Rip to those villagers then, I guess. So, we need some spuds. There we go. That should be good enough to get our villagers breeding back at spawn again. So, my dudes, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and throw you some carrots. There you go. Do you guys like carrots? Well, I... I did I just say carrots? Did I just say carrots? Those were potatoes. My goodness, I am an idiot. Please never listen to me again. Apparently, I don't even know what a spud is. So, hello there, Capitan. I believe we have a fishing date. 
Yes, just me and you on the bright blue ocean together. Oh, it'll be so romantic. Nothing but good times to show. I've got a look of the C2 fishing rod, as well as an unbreaking 3 rod. So as soon as this one reaches low durability, I'll fix it up with this one. And hopefully we'll have some good enchantments on our fishing rod by then. Don't you agree, sir? I think he does. Oh, that puffer fish went flying. <laughs> Ooh, name tag. That's pretty cool. We'll use one of those to name our Capitan over here. What should I name you, Captain? What would be a good name for our Captain here? I'm not sure. Are you jelly over there? Of me and my date? That turtle is totally jealous. <laughs> I reckon our other pillager might be a little bit jealous too, you know? Me and my little date with the captain. I should probably mention I don't actually need a captain. Ooh, really bad. Nice. But I don't actually need a captain for the iron farm. I I'm just getting the captain for the novelty of having a captain in the iron farm, really. <laughs> Aww. This is such a beautiful sunset. Just me and you, captain. Here to witness this today. Oh. Beautiful, don't you think? Yes, the colours are indeed perfect. The orange glow just of the horizon there. And there we go. The sun is sinking below the horizon. So, I guess we get to spend our first night together, Captain. <laughs> I mean, it's just you, me... In this one boat together. Anything could happen. We could be attacked by drowned. And <laughs> who will protect me when I'm being attacked by drowned? <laughs> oh dear. I'm sorry, dude, but you're just not good date material. Goodbye. <gasps> Sir! You just broke your crossbow. Does that mean you... You actually really want to be with me in peace? Forever? Oh, you've, you've really touched my feelings there. I'm just gonna park you right over here. And dump your sorry ass because I have someone else that I've been eyeing in the distance over here. I'm sorry, Captain. It's just... Hey! Don't look away from me! Oh, he's so sad. <laughs> oh dear, but this guy... Oh, this pillager. I'm all about this pillager now. This pillager is just something else. <laughs> They've just got so many attractive qualities from the attack eyebrows, those green eyes, that nose. I think I even see a hint of a smile beneath that nose. Oh, go you. Ah! I'm under attack. Who's near me? Oh, get out of here, baby. I, you're not invited. There we go. Guys, I don't know if I'm just reaching here, but this night does feel weirdly serene. Don't you think? I've been out here on this little raft with this pillager all night. And you know what hasn't come out to play? Phantoms. Do phantoms attack you if you're in a boat? Does being in a boat stop them from spawning? Or am I just ever so slightly low enough in the world that they can't spawn? What's the deal there? Because now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever had a single phantom spawn while I've been boating about in the ocean. Is that normal? Well, in that case, boating just seems so much better to me. You're just floating around in your boat and there's just no phantoms there to scare you. You don't have to deal with insomnia. I wonder if I should just stay in a boat for the rest of this hardcore world. That would be something, wouldn't it? Oh, I'm loving this. The fact that there's just not a single phantom in this entire fishing process. I've got to say, that's really turned me around on fishing. I should fish more often. I thought this little fishing date would be so much more painful if the phantom's just constantly interrupting the date. But you know what? This has gone really well. I've got to say. Ah, oh, just look at that. Sunrise, eh, Mr. Pillager? What do you make of that, eh? Hey, 
Um, guys, you better stay over there. Don't you dare come over near here. Yeah, that's right. Walk on by. I've already got my pillagers. I don't need any more. I could get another captain, though. No, our captain over there is more than good enough for us. You guys can stay over there or just leave. Now, shoot. What are they doing over there? They're just jumping about. <laughs> they seem very excited. <laughs> Ooh, Nautilus shell. Nice. Could do with more of those. <laughs> I've got a feeling that those pillagers aren't going to go anywhere for as long as that captain keeps dancing. <laughs> they can't move on because they all follow the captain. They keep coming back. <laughs> Still going at it. <laughs> you know, I don't know what that guy's lifestyle is, but he seems happy. I want that lifestyle. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. I just broke that fishing rod. All right, I meant to actually repair it with this one. I guess we're not doing that today, eh? <laughs> oh! Sir! You broke your crossbow for me. Oh, but thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm quite touched. You've reached me directly into my heart. But you know what? I think you're a better match for our captain over here. So... Oh, I'm stuck. Oh, let me off. Let me off. There we go. Pillager. Meet Captain. Captain. Meet Pillager. Um, I'm going to leave you two lovebirds be. And I am going to get myself the third Pillager. Come with me, sir. We've got some fishing to do. Now, can we make it to the water? I think we can. Let's just go down this way. Yes. This way, sir. Ooh, we're so speedy when we go downwards. <laughs> now it's just me, you, the boat, and the ocean, sir. What do you think? Fishing day? Yeah? I'll have you know, the other two pillagers I were with didn't last very long. So let's see what you can do. Oh my gosh, look at them. Still going at it. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt them or anything. I just want them to keep doing it forever. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> what are they even stuck on? What are they doing? Oh, I get it. They're fighting for control over a one block wide chump. <laughs> I love mob AI in this game sometimes. <laughs> Ooh, saddle. Nice. You know, I really should fish more often. It's quite nice, the fact that I'm able to experience nighttime without a single phantom appearing in the sky. Do you know how much I missed that? Oh my goodness. This is blissful. <laughs> I know I've got an annoying noise of crossbows firing in the background, but... I get to experience nighttime without having to worry about a single thing up in the sky. I love that. In other news, those two pillagers are still jumping. <laughs> jump, 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 jump. Those two pillagers are professional jumpers. <laughs> Ooh, second Nautilus shell, nice. You'd think they'd grow tired and they'd have really sore leg muscles and they'd just be like, Oh, I can't, I can't keep doing this any longer. And that creeper has literally despawned out of boredom, but they're still, they keep jumping. <laughs> and the other guys up there are like, Jerry, Harold, can we move on yet? But no, they just have the urge to jump. <laughs> Once they get started, they can't be stopped. I have just noticed that that crossbow that this pillager has is actually enchanted. It might actually have unbreaking on it, and that would be kind of annoying. It might take a very, very long time to break. Let's hope that's not going to be the case. But if it is, and it just takes too long, I do have some very good other candidates over there. <laughs> 
Can you just imagine jumping up and down for a day straight? Because that's what those two pillagers are doing right now. They're just jumping up and down, never stopping. It's like a jump marathon right now. Oh, just look at those two lovebirds over there in the distance. Just looking lovingly into each other's eyes. Oh, so cute. <laughs> Whereas me and you? Oh yeah, we are definitely an item. <laughs> oh, look at that. You can actually see the villagers. There's probably quite a few of them up there now, you know? Oh, yeah, you can actually see a child too. <laughs> I wonder how many we've got now. You know, I actually have a lot of respect for their commitment to the bit. It's like, no, I must be the one to climb up on top of that block, not you. And yet they they still keep fighting over it. Neither of them will let up. They're just going to keep going and going and going. Their legs must be absolutely killing by now. <laughs> I respect the workout, though. The pillager workout routine is clearly pretty intense. <laughs> Think about their leg muscles, though. Oh. Clearly, strongly defined on their legs. Literally chiseled to perfection. Incredible fitness. So strong, in fact, that those legs... I wouldn't be surprised if they had their own separate six-pack. <laughs> no, not the rain. Oh, it's a thunderstorm, too. That was getting on so well with you, my friend. But alas, the rain must just ruin our date. I'm sorry, Pillager. I'll try better next time. Aha! Oh. I hope it doesn't strike there. <laughs> Please don't convert my villagers to witches. Oh! That was close. Oh, that was super close. Right there. It almost got the skeleton. <laughs> and still, the jumpers just keep on jumping. They will not be deterred by some puny thunderstorm. They have jumping to do. <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. Oh. Um. Oh, I'm tempted. Right. Let's just... How close can I get? Boom. Please. There we go. Nice. I do like myself some skeleton horses. <laughs> Now those guys can just fight each other or something, I don't know. Uh, that skeleton's killed its horse though, sadly. But, I do like skeleton horses. <laughs> hey! The pillager has finally broken his crossbow, and you know what he's doing now? He's giving me a nice back massage. Oh, I'm glad they appreciate this much to give me that massage. <laughs> well... I guess I've now got to somehow get those two pillagers and this fellow all the way up to the iron farm. How am I going to do that? I don't think we have any more use for fishing anymore. So let's just park you up over here, my friend. Why are your arms outstretched? I have no idea. These two have got their arms down. Why are your arms up? But just to show you everything that we got from fishing just then, we got a bow, we got a new fishing rod, we got a lily pad, we got a name tag, and we got two nautilus shells and two saddles. But no enchanted books, sadly. Ah, well, there's always next time, eh? I can't believe it. Those pillagers are still jumping. <laughs> Oh no! They've escaped! Just as I flew over! <laughs> they probably caught sight of me just for a split second and that's allowed them to stop. Aww! That's actually kind of upset me. <laughs> they were doing so good at jumping too. I was really cheering on for them. <laughs> but okay, we need to work out how we get the pillager in there. Alright, so I've made a little bit of a tube for our pillagers to go down. We just need to get them into this water stream and then hopefully we can take them straight over to this little elevator at the end of this stream here. And that will take us straight up into the module for the first pillager to be put in place. There we go. So I think we should be able to drop our first pillager straight in there without too much trouble. 
And then after that, it's just a matter of making that tube taller. Yeah, it should work. Now, before we move these guys into the iron farm, we're going to need to give them a name. So, let's go with Captain Irony for the captain, Rusticus, and also Fefefe. Who should we go for first? I think Captain Irony should be in the top layer, so let's not do them. I think we should go for Rusticus. Yes. You shall be our first installment. Now, how hard is this going to be? I really don't know. <laughs> Over this way, please, sir. Oh. Yes. Don't resist. Just go that way. Thank you. And going, 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 gone. Let's follow him up. Now hopefully this pillager should end up just going straight into the iron farm. And he has. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> so let's just build this a little bit taller and we'll get our next pillager in. Okay, it's your turn, Fefefe. Let's go. Let's get you on the farm. Go on, Fefefe. You've got this. He's still got his arms up. I'm not entirely sure why. <laughs> what are you trying to do? <laughs> are you pretending to be a ghost? Yeah, I don't blame you. That's one of my favourite things to do as well. And just like a ghost, you shall vanish. Goodbye, sir. And he should hopefully go straight in. There we go. That's what you like to see. Right, so that's the red and the orange layer done. So all that's left to be done is Captain Irony in the yellow layer. Hi, Captain. Your turn now. Let's get you in the farm. Ah, that's an interesting pose you've got with your arms there too. I've got to say, <laughs> I feel like our pillagers have got their own personalities with their different poses. <laughs> all right. Up you go, sir. Thank you, Captain. And then you can go straight in there. Yeah, there we go. Lovely. But that does mean that we have all three of our pillagers now in place. Brilliant. So now all that's left is we need to get our villagers into their little modules, which shouldn't be too hard. I don't think we'll do it this night time, but maybe the next one. All right, all of our villagers have fully grown up, so let's let them loose. And hopefully they'll go straight to their beds. It is becoming slowly night time. They are making their way over slowly. So hopefully we'll get some villagers into place. Maybe I should uh, lower the iron farm. Just the, uh, the gates. There we go. So the villagers shouldn't be able to see that villager anymore. Now go in. Go to bed. Come on. You can do it. Oh, no. They can't go to bed through the chains. Oh, no. Right. I'm going to have to break that then. I'm going to have to do that with all of them. Ah, oh, We're all swarming the same beds. <laughs> we're going to make it so that you can't go back this way at least. You know, this is a really handy water bucket trick. Because the villages on the beds are actually just ever so slightly too low for the water to take a hold of them. So they can just lie there. While I just go ahead and hopefully get these villages out of the way. There we go. It's another one done. You're the last guy. Just go in. Just do what I want you to. Just, it's been so long. I want to finish this episode. Yes! Oh, that's good. We've got our final villagers into place, everyone. It's finally happened. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and remove all of this pointless, ugly stone. All right, so with the removal of this stone slab, I believe that this iron farm is completely ready to go. Oh, this is such a milestone. <laughs> Okay, how do I want to go about this? I know that iron golems can spawn because we've had a couple of mishaps. 
I think we had some gossiping issues while the villagers were on the way up the farm and it ended up with a few iron golems spawning on the walkways, which was not intended at all and a little bit dicey, but I ended up just shoving them over the edge. So the question is, do we have something that works? I do have a chest in my inventory and if I open the chest, then theoretically, Iron Golems will spawn. Okay. Let's see what happens. Oh. Right. Moment of truth. Okay. What did I get? Did I get Golems? Oh. Stop zooming. We've got Golems! Yes! Oh, we've got lots of Golems. I think we've got lots of golems anyway. <laughs> Let's look at the uh, the base here. Watch from the bottom. Okay. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's actually really good. <laughs> There's another one. Oh, I think this farm might just be extremely lucrative. And that's another one. Okay. I'm... Oh, even more. Guys. I think my iron farm might actually just be working. That's incredible, honestly. The fact that this has worked, basically on the first time of actually trying to test it, I couldn't be happy with this, honestly. So I said that that kill chamber is only temporary. I think in the future, we'll have the golems teleported straight up to the top there. Well, not teleported, transported, and we'll do something fun up there. But for now, just to get us a little bit of iron for now, that is actually incredible. And it's so good. And it's actually so good that the iron golems are actually pushing each other out of the lava. <laughs> They're too fat. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so it's been running for about, what, two minutes? 26 iron in there, 38 in there, 25 in there. This farm is nothing short of incredible. And it's already getting us tons of iron too. Oh, that is beautiful. Wow, that is fast. It is non-stop constant iron golem damage noises there. That is actually insane. <laughs> but I hope you all enjoyed that episode as much as I have had fun making it because wow, this farm is insane. I love it. <laughs> Next time, I think we'll give ourselves a proper storage room for this place. So I hope you'll stay tuned for then. But on that note, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!